Hello and warm welcome to this new course. Thank you for enrolling it. My name is Alwi Muhammad Habib and I'll be doing the instructor role inside this course. So we'll be creating a PrestaShop 1.7, the latest version, a module. We'll be creating our custom module and we'll be able to sell it later and to play it and to place it sorry in the add-ons store in case we would like to get some money. So let me just guide you through this course and tell you what we'll be saying. The very first thing which is actually this uh, episode was a presentation of the theory. After that we'll be going to present our tool, the setup of our machine etc, the IDE and the next episode will be uh, understanding the module in general, what is PrestaShop module, how to install it from what you can, etc. Uh, and so also the place where we can purchase or download free of them. And the next episode will be about understanding or an existing module. We'll be editing an existing module and discovering its pages, component, front end, back end, display, etc. Then we move out to our custom module. We'll be creating our very first module from scratch for sure. Then the next episode will be about explaining the functions that we are typing inside this module to understand, to have a clear idea about what's going on in uh, PrestaShop modules and we'll be also discovering the new uh, features from 1.7 PrestaShop comparing that did not actually exist on 1.6 and the next episode will be creating a front page or also call it a controller page or before that actually a hook that we can display content from the module to a specific place of uh, our template then we'll be creating a backend page uh, like an administration page for our module then we start talking about controller for the front side and controller for the back side of our module and finally we end up with a beautiful summary hope you yeah, that you will enjoy this course please follow along and have a nice uh, watching okay let's start our course and see you in the next episode thank you welcome back so on this episode I'll be presenting my setup for this project and for sure this is applicable for any platform other than mine rather than my custom setup so uh, I'm working on a Ubuntu machine with 1804 uh, latest uh, version uh, and uh, my IDE is PHP Storm for sure you can just work with any IDE you feel comfortable with you can use NetBeans, uh, VS Code, whatever uh, and just selected a PHP Storm because it's a helpful in case uh, in terms of autocomplete etc and uh, about the PrestaShop version, sorry, you can just select whatever 1.7 version because this course is not applicable to any specific 1.7 version. You can start from 1.70 to 1.755. This is the latest until this course is recorded, so it's really applicable to any version of the 1.7 and you simply need an Apache server to uh, run your application on and uh, yes so if you are in Windows or in uh, Mac OS then it's exactly the same so uh, there is nothing really fancy you can also run Docker which is um, my selection so I'll be using Docker to speed up things and to start with I will be using a repo an official repo from PrestaShop which is github slash PrestaShop uh, slash docker and uh, scroll a bit down we'll find a list of instructions to follow um, it's really simple it won't take a uh, big time to have a presto shop already up and running into your machine so you can get or can use tag for this uh, for example docker run dash, dash ti and name my docker name etc and we are just passing some um some uh, like uh, environment variable as i said this is a selection that all oh, this is a choice if you are um familiar with docker if not the case then you simply go to prestashop.com and download the version you want the 1.7 anywhere any version you want and just install it into uh, your machine uh, using a uh, WAMP or example whatever uh, local server and you are ready so you can just skip uh, this episode if you uh, will not be using docker okay 
Uh, and yep, so uh, for those who need to uh, start with Docker, then uh, the next episode will be for you guys. See you in the next one. So to start using Docker with PrestaShop, as I said in the previous episode, we'll be referring to uh, GitHub repo, PrestaShop slash Docker, and we'll be just following the instruction in this repo. And uh, let's just read a bit what's going on there. So uh, we have a version, a different version, a different image with a various PrestaShop version. We have 1.7, 1.4, 1.6 almost all of them and we have also our php version we can by default our image are running php 5.6 but each major version can be launched with another with other php version if you want so we have a version of apache fpm etc and you can use tags for this for example uh, and let me just copy this command or this instruction and move into my ID. Hopefully it's quite clear. So I'm launching a new one and I'll be placing myself under my desktop and inside it I will create an mcarrier um, folder and uh, call it PrestaShop and then say this cd to it and from here I will just run a docker command which is this one and don't forget to append the sudo since it's uh, it does need like uh, high level permissions of uh, the user and let me just edit a bit uh, it's slightly big so let me just uh, reduce a bit of the size to maybe 16 all right and there you go so it's quite readable hopefully let me make this bigger okay so what's going on here? We have so, so, sudo docker run dash ti detached mode. Then the name it will be my docker name. Let me call this. Um, oops, sorry. I would like to call this PrestaShop Docker. That it can refer to it later. PrestaShop Docker with an underscore and uh, e as an environment to pass to ps dev mode to false and another environment variable ps install auto equals to zero the dash p will be exposing to the port 8080 uh, and a detached mode from the prestashop plus prestashop um, 1.7 and right here if you go back to github we can just select whatever version like, uh, I will pick just the latest version I think the 1.75 and just place it like this there and right here I would like to expose a dash v from the current folder to um, the var slash 3w slash html okay so if you know docker then this means we are mounting volume from here to inside our container okay then hit enter enter the password and wait a second that it download all of the uh, the needed files and that's it so to take a little while since my connection is a bit slow and uh, after this time we'll be having ready a version of prestashop and we can just uh, do the manual installation the classic installation that we do in our looking machine using example womp or whatever okay so i'll be back when it's done hello and welcome back so downloading is done also i executed a script or a command to install my SQL container and also I created a network that will, be, that will do the connector between my SQL container and PrestaShop container and almost everything is ready now so just one th one more thing uh, in the first video about Docker we launched this this command that is looping our PrestaShop installation we need to really to stop this container using uh, its name then stop you know the docker command uh, so we just do sudo docker stop and uh, the three first digit of uh, the container reference then execute this command uh, that will do a bear mapping between uh, the network uh, first of all between 
the name of the container in case it would be named some PrestaShop and the network which is PrestaShop Net and the MySQL server which is this one and everything should be ready now and there you go so you should be landed into this page and uh, proceed with the classic installation of PrestaShop nothing really fancy right here all, all is good right here and next let me just set up this information like uh, Udemy uh, module whatever and let me just cars United States first name I'm placing my name and my email password let's go for a password and right here they said that it must be oh this email address oh sorry must be at least eight character so if we go on two three four four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight next and we good and now it's time to configure connection to the database so I go back to repo right here they said you need to define this host or this URL to uh, point to my SQL container so instead of 1.27 I'll be placing this one and in the database name I'll leave it for now and for the login I will do root and for the password I will do admin and I get that from here if you just scroll a bit up then I'll find that I'm having um, yes uh, my SQL root uh, my SQL root password is admin and that's it so uh, the root also is the default user so if you just scroll again a bit down you can see that uh, this command to connect from the command line is dash u user within a space I don't know why they forget to put space it's root and we have an admin as a password okay let me test this and okay connection my school succeeded but database prestige did not exist okay this means that we are connected to my sql container another term to my sql database but the database called prestashop does not exist and in my case i would like to call it prestashop udemy oops prestashop lowercase prestashop okay come on udemy course cool and I will refresh again so it will attempt to create it attempt to create okay all went good next and it will start the process of installing PrestaShop in the classic way okay I think that was um, a good pretty nice video for docker and see you in the next one once everything is done with the installation thank you for watching and see you in the next one in the previous video we did install PrestaShop on Docker and in this video I would like to install it the classic way so in a local server or on a distant server so no Docker, no nothing really fancy just the classic installation so I start by the classic or the used uh, like uh, that we used to to have this page with it just pick the language you would like to use for the installation then hit next then if you are in um, like a, a new Ubuntu uh, you may face some problem with missing uh, extensions or uh, missing library so just a bit of googling can solve the problem right here we're just accepting the license arguments and uh, hit next and at this page just check that everything is fine uh, as I said on same of extension etc just here I'm missing um, uh, just one point here uh, to get the latest internet internet play and yeah that work internationalization data upgrade uh, the ICU system package and the PHP in it will PHP extension doesn't really matter since I'm not having like a red uh, problem or red sign right here so a system can adapt itself to this uh, to the current requirements so hit next and at this page you will be asked to set the name of the information so this one will be Udemy module uh, for a shop name you can just pick cars for example just pick whatever you want I'll pick United Kingdom oops sorry for that United Kingdom 
and my full name I'll just paste my name right there that a dollar Mohammed email address so just the classic things all right okay wherever that one password just put password that you could remember and just hit next the next thing it will be oops you just missed something that the password must contain an alphanumeric letters so let's go for admin hopefully I won't forget this um hope and uh, just repeat the password very classic and used to have and now it's time to connect to the database uh, in my case I'm having running my SQL server in my machine my Ubuntu machine so have to set the address or database server address to localhost or 127001 and press the shop as a database I believe it's not created yet so the system will handle that for us and right here so I'd like just call it as we did in the previous video I, w I would like to call it Udemy course, Prestige Udemy course. Then the database login will be root, and I'm having password as a password. The prefix. Let's just test that everything is fine. He said that yeah, the connection was succeeded to the database, but it's missing the the database itself. Oh, sorry, uh, the connection succeeded to the server, but the database does not exist. So it's time to create the database automatically and cannot create the database automatically. Okay, and there is no problem. In this case, I you can use whether the terminal to create a new database or just uh, using any uh, like a graphic user interface uh, application to create the database manually. And next, you know, just uh, start the installation, hitting next, and we'll start 12, 23, and all the steps. And at the end, you will have Prestige ready to start even working with. I won't just make this video more long. You know what's rest. So see you in the next one. PrestaShop extensively revolve around modules, which are a small program that make us or make use of PrestaShop functionalities and change them and add it to them in order to make PrestaShop easy to use or more tailored to merchant needs. So as an introduction for PrestaShop module, we will be saying the following. So the first thing is the technical principle behind a module. A PrestaShop module consists of main PHP files. So basically we have a collection of PHP files that is the base or the building block of our module and uh, as many of other files such as TPL, CSS, GS, uh, etc. So various files other than PHP. So any PrestaShop module once installed on any online shop can interact with one or more hooks. Hooks as we saw that in the previous 1.6 version it's exactly the same idea. Places where we the module or the can display content that generated from the database or from uh, any type of uh, treatment. Okay, So hooks enable you to hook and attach your code to the current view or the theme at the time of the code passing. So for example when displaying the card on the product sheet, when displaying the card for example, uh, when we move, let, let me just jump into this product that you can follow along, sorry for the junky dump, but for example when we do see this, uh, the card inside the product page, that means that we are hooking the product or cart module inside the product page. All right. So modules operating principle. Mainly modules are the ideal way to let your talent and imagination as a developer to express themselves. So we have like a full freedom to do whatever we want with modules using their hooks. So, any module can display a variety of content, blocks, text, images, etc. 
can be also made as configurable as necessary so the more configurable it is the easier it will be to use for the end user also it can be or it can added functionality extra new functionality to prestation without having to edit its core file so we are like building a new layer above prestashop core and we are editing uh, the functionality that we need without touching the core of prestashop files all the core files of prestashop so the main difference also between the 1.6 and the 1.7 which is good things to talk about that prestashop 1.7 was built so that modules that were written for prestashop 1.6 could work too also as is so for example, if you have a module from the 1.6 version and uh, like we would like to use it in the with the latest 1.7, then it's possible to do that. So the major module development change in PrestaShop 1.7 are explained in detail in details. Uh, and I will left you uh, an article uh, and if following this article we'll, we'll list the list of the changes comparing to 1.6 modules and a few native modules have been split between 1.6 and 1.7 version and here is some names of it so for example for the 1.6 the advanced uh, advanced uh, compliance become PS legal compliance and also the block banner became PS banner block best seller became, became PS seller etc and uh, yeah some changes did happen uh, through this migration from 1.6 to 1.7 okay that's uh, I think enough talking about modules and let's see the next step uh, let's have a look inside our files and try to discover things in more details in why uh, making our hands dirty a bit with the code so a good starting point to understand PrestaShop module is to have a look into an existing modules. So for example, I pick the block insurance or insurance as an example to just understand a bit what's going on out there. So let's just start by have a look to the main structure files and uh, folders of this modules. It starts by having four uh folders views translation lang and images inside images which the name match and we find a list of images with an index .php for blocking direct access to it uh for listing actually also and uh, lang or folder lang that will be containing the translation of this module and also it's just a simple php class that return an array of uh, various translation and uh, sorry a lang yeah i just misspelled that i don't replace the main in it so it's um, related to translation but we have already uh, a translation folder that uh, that will contain whether yaml file or php file that contain the translation but this is uh reinsurance lang that uh, also in relation with the translation uh, purpose and views will contain the various templates that uh, our template uh, could have so we could have one template or many templates that depend on where to hook for example this one contain templates hook and it's hookable to a certain place and it have a specific template and also a specific template could be used in many hooks for uh, each modules okay the next we have the main file which is the name of the module.php and right here it's block insurance.php and it's actually a php class so if you jump into we will see that we have this instruction that is allowing more security to um, uh, let's uh, like a guard to protect um, the, the the class or the module from getting access directly and we'll be explaining this in next episode normally when we start doing our very first modules then next we start just doing a native php right here we, has, we are requiring a namespace with widget interface which is one of the newest features on prestashop 1.7 modules development and right here we're including a ps modules a ps module dir which is a constant that is referring to the modules folder this one and just requiring a reassurance in class that is containing definition of table structure that we're moving to it later and explain what is going on there 
and right here we start coding our class so just we have the class name that extends the module and by itself it's implemented widget interface as if it's it's the new uh, things with prestashop 1.7s and right here we are defining like a private uh, variable uh, and just a native php development of the constructor with a wise setting various attributes uh, such as the name the author the version and uh, the bootstrap whether we need bootstrap or not the parent constructor which is the module and as my ide highlights uh, it's the module constructor that we are overriding if you just click here when we we will be sorry redirected to modules uh, module class uh, inside classes slash modules and if you just keep going we are setting more details for the installation purpose and uh, we are defining the compliance so this module will be available for 1.72 and further or above then we are the new things also or well, actually not really new but a new good practice that invented by prestige team let me just reduce this so we are defining the template file just inside the constructor so no need to um to call the template file each time we need to pass a hook or to create a hook for it and next also we have a function for the installation it's really and especially when you have sorry for that when you have uh databases to be created etc so uh, the classic 1.6 function that return a parent install and a test that everything went well with uh, whether creating database or registering a hook etc and right here we have a function or method that create databases uh databases table for uh for the purpose of the module in install that remove the databases and it will just return parent and install just the same classic in uh, like in 1.6 and install database just to remove the database and it's called right here and uh, we have more like functions start really doing the logic right here so creating the methods that we need to handle the actions that we need to achieve using this module and a bit down we start talking about hooks where we want to hook this module so we have the hook action update Lying after we have a get content for the backend or admin panel so admin panel will be actually handled by this method we have another function that uh, do or execute a query to the database and return data in its form this is a helper that uh, is used actually in the back office page or the controller back of his controller that allow us to edit or insert a new records into the database from the admin panel and let me just go a bit down so just another helper right here for init list etc just an example to explain um that uh, the pretension module is simply a collection of files i mean let me just get back to the module structure or files that uh, I can explain the rest of files so config.xml it's an xml file containing various information about um, the module so we're having uh, Belize or whatever it's called a name and or an attribute Belize is in French a display name this uh, will be used to display the name or to display the module name in the back of it when we go to uh, modules and uh, just here modules and module services and next we have a version of the module the description the author who is the author is configurable yes or no and need an instance actually most of these information are extracted from the information that we defined into or inside the constructor of our module so for example if you're just see for the description other than information block aim it to an offering helpful information we can just jump back to our constructor and we do see that other information block aim it to other offering so once prestashop install a module it will read these information then pass them into a config.xml file that would be like a reference uh, for prestashop to get the quickly to get quickly information about that module and the display to the user okay the index file uh, .php also is uh, almost any folder inside prestige must contain this file to avoid direct access as i said previously and right here we have a logo.png that will be used to display an icon or uh, like a small image 
beside the name of the module and the back of it that could be used as a user uh, that be useful actually for user experience and next we have a reinsurance class and this is some specificity some modules especially when you need to work with databases and uh, create tables uh, there is a, what we call the design pattern or active record so we are defining uh, a class that extends object models and also it just define here uh, the fields uh, in the database so for example the reinsurance item in the database is composed from an ID, an ID sharp, a fine name and a text and an approach to go oriented object we create um, an object that represents the database and object model will be like an ORM for example if you know um, a doctrine then it's based on entities that transform into a relational uh, table. So this is the case. Active record in PrestaShop is using a class to represent the table inside the database. Hopefully you get that. We will get into this later. And also we could have a CSS file uh, specific for that module. And as you may notice here, we have a specific um, uh, tables or let's say nomination that is really related and uh, hard coupled to that specific module <clears throat> okay also uh, some people may would like to have another file or, or sorry a directory that could be called um, assets or style and the CSS GS would be placed inside that folder so that was a quick look inside uh, the block insurance module hopefully you get some hints and uh, normally in the next episode we will start digging deep and making our hands dirty with, while creating our very first module. In this episode, we'll start creating our very first module, a pretty basic that will be that will let us to learn a bit more technical about PrestaShop modules. So, as a quick start, modules must follow some guidelines. And to work well with PrestaShop, we have to follow some instructions. And if you want to get started quickly with ready-to-use modules, then I have a good news for you that you can download a um, like skeleton offered by PrestaShop developer team that can guide you through the best practice and some kind of ready things that you can start with using the PrestaShop validator that allow you to download a ready module as I said. I'm just gonna repeat it myself. So you can just click on this link and you can get it ready. Okay, so before that we really start doing code, um, uh, you should know, should be aware that the PrestaShop team uses a specific set of coding convention or uh, let's call them coding standards or coding norm and as Wikipedia say, coding convention are a set of guidelines for a specific programming language that recommend programming style, practice and methods for each aspect of this program within in this language. Okay, this is kind of long description and can be confusing for some people. This means that Prestige of Developers set a list of rules to uh, as a guideline that will let you create modules with good quality and that fit to Prestige of rules. Okay, so let's create a first module and enough talking because I'm kind of boring. Uh, this will, be, will enable us to better describe its structure with the name and we will name it my modules so the very first thing to do is to go to modules folder right here and click in new directory and call that directory my module my module cool without an S and this folder must contain the main file a PHP file of the same name of the folder which will handle most of the processing and in our case for short it will be called my module dot PHP and excuse me here it must be all lowercase this is the git convention so let me just do refactor rename uh, Take this, and this must be a lowercase my module. Go, and inside it, as I said, I will be creating a new PHP file. Actually, it will be a PHP class that will be called my module. 
So that's enough for a very basic module, but obviously more files and folders can be added later. Now let's go inside this module file, the PHP file, and I'll be editing the very first as it's defined also here. We'll be checking the PS version. This will uh, protect our module from direct access. So for example, if someone, some hackers find a way to navigate to uh, my module slash file dot PHP, sorry, directly through the URL and this uh, this uh, this instruction will be the guard to protect our files. Okay, so this check for an existence of an always existing PrestaShop constant, its version number, and it does not if it's not or if it does not exist, it stop the module from loading and blocking the rest of the code that will be placed right here. Okay, so this is the very first explanation of the day. Okay. So the main class, the main class, which is this one, my module, for example, uh, must contain the module's main class along with other classes in a needed PrestaShop use object oriented programming. And so it is a modules or, or so do in its modules. So that class must be the same name as the module and its folder. And we did already that. And we'll be extending. Oops extend a module class pretty cool so if we just jump back we'll see that we are extending a module who is a class sub that came from oh, okay i'm just loading a cache file but this one is actually extending by itself a module core which is this one under the classes modules and module.php okay so let me go back to my modules right here and keep going with it. A PrestaShop module can also extend from any other derived class from modules. For example, we can extend from payment module. And also we can extend from module.grid engine or module.graph or module graph, sorry. So all these modules actually implement or extend by themselves from the module so if we just jump to the source code of uh, classes payment module we found that it's actually pointing to the module so all these modules are der derived or like uh, like sub childs of the main module uh, class okay so at this stage, if you place the modules folder uh, inside the theme slash folders, or sorry, inside uh, the website slash folder, the module can already be seen in the modules page and in the back office in the other modules section, albeit with no real name nor the thumbnail. At this stage, our module is ready, really to to be activated from the back office. Just I missed something here that it, we need to have. A uh, capital M for uh, the class name then we ready to go so now if I go to the back office of my website and just move to modules and then module services and selection tab and my module should show up here but unfortunately uh, PrestaShop did not allow to to have like an organized view so most of these modules are coming from uh, the add-ons store so I would like to have like a filter to filter other modules or local modules or something that is more friendly used or used uh, useful friendly so uh, just to find my module I have to control F and hit my module and there you go so this is the module nothing is there yet V by there is no version we don't know which we did not define actually the version to have it like this one for example and we did not define the by uh, for the partner or the developer who created that and we can just hit install it will pop up that uh, the installation error cannot install modules enable to install modules so I may need to refresh the page so 
uh, and it will not pass because as as I said we need to define much more information that PrestaShop could accept that as an install an installable module if it's correct to say that so if I just search back my module there you go and if I, if I hit install I get that pop up again saying that cannot install module my module enable to install the module module name is not valid because it's not set so if I go back to my files right here uh, so I will need to create the very important method as we spoke about in the previous video when we saw the block insurance module if you do remember which is the constructor so to speed things I will copy paste some informations and just paste it right here all right so this is my constructor construction modules or sorry methods and it will define these information that I need to have that PrestaShop could accept the installation of my module so the name will be my module uh, it will be a front office and uh, if you don't know what does that mean we need to uh, define where this module will be taking action if it's front or back or whatever so if we let me just do some googling if i just paste this we will need we will have a list of um uh, what is the call uh, a list of uh, names or options where the module could be placed oh sorry uh just not this one actually Uh, where what is the word press the shop front office okay let me just call that this is the list of possible tab uh, attribute or option that we can define inside this uh, dollar this tab so you can define front office you can define advertising marketing analyst stat billing invoicing checkout dashboard etc and this is front office so this is a list of possible options that we can define for this and as i said this is the place like where we want this module to be taking action the next option is the version this is the very first version i would like to define my name here are the, the author of this module and need instance uh, I will set it to zero but for instance that mean indicate whether to load the module class when displaying the module page in the back office if it's set to zero the module will not be loaded and therefore will spend less resources to generate modules page if your module need to display a warning message in the module page then you must set this attribute let me just repeat repeat that when we set this to need instance equals to zero that may indicate whether to load the modules class which is this one what whether to load it or not when displaying the module page in the back office all right so if it's set to zero as i said the module will not be loaded okay hopefully you get the point and the next thing i'm just defining the version compliance here i will start from 1.70 and above and i reach the possible max 1.7 version and right here i would like to update this can load file i would like to update it to ps version so just uh, for the best of practice is to test uh, the version not the 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 can load file okay uh yep so next i'm just calling uh, the bootstrap yes to true since i would like maybe i will use the bootstrap classes etc and right here i'm just displaying the name so i'm calling this udemy module for presta shop oops what is that for, sorry that for PrestaShop 1.7 all right then the description like a, um, a module created for the purpose of PrestaShop or of Udemy course whatever just 
you can type whatever you want, but it will be significant to use that to understand what is the main action of that module and the confirmation install we can just leave it as it is now and the, as you may notice we have dollar this l which mean we, uh, we are passing a translatable message dollar this l and l is for a language or for translation all right then uh, the next is if configuration get my module name uh, then we set this warning etc so configuration is one of the, the helpers or the tools in PrestaShop that allow us to store like a quick a small information inside a table called uh, configuration that uh, we can use this table to define like uh, for example uh, in the slider in the home page slider if you do remember we have that slide that loop so that slide actually store information about the speed the time of transition etc inside that configuration table so you get the point uh, configuration table is used to store small information like parameters etc but not a whole big information imagine that we will be storing articles or uh, such big information then configuration won't be the good choice at this stage we can do install our module but first let me just get rid of this just put it in, into a command that I could I could use this later so now move back to the back office and inside the module services just search for Udemy since we did rename our module to Udemy and there you go so Udemy module for PrestaShop and here is the version my name as an author and the description that we define a module created for the purpose of Udemy course okay now if I hit install now it will do install our module and unfortunately it's up and running and selection and module my module succeeded and there you go so you may notice that the, the option did change and became disable and we have a drop down menu that uh, show up uh, with an option and install another one disable and reset and congratulations you have an active modules so in the next episode we'll go a bit deeper with functions like example we'll be creating a database and we will be in resist or just drink another hook okay so we did install our modules but now we need to go a bit deeper into our development process so some module have more needs than just using PrestaShop features in a special way. So our module may need to perform actions on our installation such as checking PrestaShop settings or registering its own setting in the database. Likewise, if you change or change things in the database on an installation, it's highly recommended to change them back or rever revert them or reverse our changes when in installing the module for sure. Or reset in it. So here is come what we call the install functions and an install function. Okay so these methods actually make it possible to control what happened when the store administration or the uh, sorry the administrator install or uninstall our module. So they must be included in the main class block of code in our example my module uh, class at the same level as the constructor method so they will be placed right here at this level so let's start by creating the install method as right here let me just put a command it's a good practice to put a command and I'll do public function and as you may guess the name it's install and you may notice that the to completion or completion or, or to complete of my IDE did discover that we are overriding method from module core that is by itself it's extended inside the module class so we are returning by default the parent install method to do changes uh, the auto generated stuff so this is could be enough but in our case let's suppose we need to create a database or do some other stuff on this first and extremely simplistic interaction incarnation sorry this method does the minimum need return the true return it by the module class install right this one method which uh, return either true if the module is com correctly installed or false otherwise so as it's called if we had not created that method 
the supercast method would have been then called instead anyway. Okay, so making the end the end result identical nevertheless we must mention this method because it will be very very useful once we have to perform a checks on action during the module installation process like creating sql tables or copying files or creating such or some configurations variable etc so for example how can you expand the install method to perform installation uh, checks in the following example we perform the following task so during the installation we will do a check that uh, the multi-store feature is enabled and also we'll check if the module parent class is installed then check that module can be attached to the left column hook then we will also check that the module can be attached to the header hook and also finally create my module 9 configuration setting in it is value uh, to with a value my friend so to do that is quite simple using this method i i know this is a lot of talk before typing any single code but there you go so it's very simple so first of all i will check that the multi-store option is enabled by this line of code if shop which is a helper which is a class actually actually sorry and uh, then we check that is feature active so we check if shop set context type shop our shop context all okay this is the very first thing so let me just put this inside a command that we can understand this later and by the way the course or the content of this course will be hosted on you on github that you can just follow along okay so check that the multi-store feature is enabled and if so then set the current context to all shop on this installation of PrestaShop. great the next thing is to check that module parent uh, class is installed so let me just put this command right here and to do that we will be placing actually a bit more content that will be checking for various things so for instance i'll be checking for all these options so we'll be check that uh that module part is a class install also i will do check that module can be attached to a left column and all these things that i took it about minutes ago so right here we're checking that everything went well with the parent installation then we register a hook left column then we register also another hook he header and we configure or added a configuration update my module with value name so e <coughs> sorry if any of these instruction or these ones does fail then actually not this one but these ones actually if any one of them does fail then the installation won't go well elsewhere we will be returning a true to override uh, the parent method and return a true okay so this way we did customize the install method and it fit our needs the next method that we'll be talking about is the uninstall. But just before that, let me just update the documentation. Okay, and it does return a boolean or throw in a PrestaShop exception. Very well. So the uninstall method, um, it will be doing almost the same as an install, but in the opposite way. When we do uninstall the module, it will proceed by some actions, okay? So here is the bare minimum things that could be accepted for the uninstalled. Simply, we are returning the parent uninstall method. But building on this foundation, we want an, inst an, an install method that would delay the data added to the database during the installation. So for example, in the installation, we define this configuration parameter or configuration setting called my module name we would like to remove it on the uninstallation so to do that it's very simple by these liners of code just updating the old version by this so exactly the same uh, old parent uninstall then we did added this line that it's responsible of removing this uh, this index from the configuration table by executing 
the configuration delete by name and we did pass the key which is the name of the attribute and that's it and finally we, as I said if one of these two fail then the installation won't continue correctly elsewhere everything will be fine and will be returning a true and also we can added more statements so let's imagine for example here if we have like database remove table or such things or remove like physical file remove uh, physical files oops i'm just miss table i misspell things remove table physical physical files etc that could be done right here in the installation method okay before carrying on on our chapters there is a missing piece of our module so we did install it everything went well but we need to display content from this module to the front users to do that i would like to have a look back to the front or to the install method which register two hooks one of left column the other one is register or is the the header so i will pick the left column and i will create a new function so it will be a public function and it will be called hook left column this way all right and inside it i will return hello from udemy or can just simply do concatenate dollar this name and that's it so now we need to go back to the back end of the page hopefully let me check that everything is well good now navigate to design position and after position you have to click on transplant right here and inside the drop down sorry we type udemy and it will show me the list of possible transplanting positions or hooks that work for this selected modules and in my case it display left column and uh, uh, the problem with my current template that there is no left columns so uh but let's just give it a shot and uh, yep it showed me that uh, the module is transplanted but as i said my template does not have a left column so what to do we can just simply add the new hook or replace this with header oops let me just spell correctly header and there you go so back to the transplant and select our udemy module and header is the only possible option now hit save we get confirmation this module is really transplanted okay great then if i scroll a bit down and refresh i get that zero right here so oh actually i'll just a mistake this should be a point great then hello from my module and there you go so our module is up and running and it's just generating contact to the front of it so my congratulations guys okay next we go a bit deeper with our module if you pay attention to the code that we wrote previously you see that we are using a configuration object so we did use it right here the configuration update value and also in the constructor that i comment in it so let me just increment it there you go so i use a configuration also right here and in, inside the an installation method so so far what is this configuration object this is PrestaShop specific object built to help developer manage their module settings. It stores these settings in the PrestaShop database without required to use SQL queries. So specifically, this object handles data from the PS configuration data tables or database table. So the main methods of this class, if you can jump into it, it contain actually oh, it's uh, extend the configure core that is containing a list of methods the most of them or so far we've used the three methods uh, to which well added a full one in the list below so configuration came with various options or various method a static method actually so we have the, the get let me just get back to 
the 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 modules that we can can type configuration so oops okay configuration and if i call the static method we do see that we have a bunch of them bunch of method that uh, are callable directly uh, from uh, the configuration so the most important them uh, we have the get then uh, we pass a key to it and to get or to, or to retrieve a specific value from the database also we have get multiple array get multiple array or multiple sorry um, that it take an array and uh, actually let me just show you an example so So, for example, you can just do this for multiple array. So, we can just pass to it. Oops, I just missed. There you go. So, it takes an array and it retrieves several values from database and return a PHP array. And uh, the example, I'm passing uh, three or four or whatever I want parameter and I will have an array with all the values of these passive parameters. And also we have configuration update value. Let me just get rid of this. Okay, I can just do configuration update value. There you go, this method. And as the name mentioned, it update a single value inside the database. And also we have a delete as we use it in the, in the in install method. Uh, where is it? Uh, there you go. So this is it to remove um, or delete a record with its name from the database. So there are many much more as get in it has context, but these four are the ones uh, much more used and uh, that probably uh, we'll be using during this course in case we need to store some information inside the database. Note also, let me just get rid of this because it's compiling an error. So just know that when using update value, uh, I mean configuration update value, the content of the dollar value can be anything, be a string, a number, a serialized PHP array or JSON object even. As long as you properly code, then uh, properly code the data handling function, anything goes, for instance, here is how to handle a PHP array, for example, using configuration. So uh, let me just show you this code right here. So let me just make this slightly bigger. Okay, so storing a serialized array inside uh, a configuration is very easy. We just use the update value and the update value will do that. Let me see. Okay will do actually to, uh, both ways. If this is set, then it will be an update. If it's not, then it will be a creation. And right here, I'm just storing a whole array that is just serialized and very simply will be in, uh, installed or let's, sorry, I'm just saying enough. Uh, okay, I think I'm getting tired. And right here, we are inserting a whole array inside our configuration and here this is the way to retrieve this array it's very simple you just do configuration get the name of the parameter and just wrap it with in serialized to get it uh, to get back our array because it was serialized before when inserting it so as you can see this is a very useful and easy to use object and will certainly use in many situations most native modules use it too for their own setting another important object to talk about is the shop object so inside the install method we did use uh, a test for the shop is featured active and it contains for sure much more uh, static stuff that we can access directly so as i said earlier how we check that the multi-store is enabled right here okay and if so set the current context to all shop and uh, on this installation on this installation of Presto. so the shop object help you manage the multi-store feature we will not be we will not dive in this specific here but we will be simply presenting the two methods that are used in this sample code the very first one is feature active this simply check whether the multi-store 
feature is active or not and if it at least two store are presented active i activate it all right then the second one is set context and the shop context all this change the context in uh, order to apply coming changes to all existing store instead of only the current store in a previous video, we had a look inside an existing module, if you do remember the insurance module. But in this chapter or on this episode, we will go a bit deeper with the module file structure. So if you just show you this shot or this screenshot or this image that explain a bit more on detail the structure. So a module is made of a lot of files, all stored inside the of, inside a folder that bear the same name as the module that folder being in turn stored in the slash modules folder at the root of the main PrestaShop folder. So for example, our module is stored under the my module or uh, my module, yes, uh, folder. Let me just back that. Okay, so this is inside, if I just hover it, so it's inside PrestaShops, then my modules, or modules, my modules, my modules.php. So here is uh, the main or the bare bones structure of the modules. So starting by the tree, so we have a config folder that's containing service.yml and also to contain a config.xml that uh, we talked about and the controllers that are uh, folder containing front and back controllers and the logo that will be used to display an image or an icon in the back of it the module name which is the main file uh, of the module so the main php file should have the same name as the module's root folder this is the condition and for instance for the block cms for example module the folder name is module slash block cms and the main file is module slash uh, block cms slash block cms module i'm just pronounce it the full uh, structure name or uh, folder name okay so, and we have also the, the what the logo we have also the folder views so this this folder contain your modules templates files tpls html twig uh, since we have invited symphony in the in the party so we have twig files sometime we we can have twig files so depending on your needs your file are located in different subfolders so we can have views slash views slash uh, template like uh, let me just get an, anyone okay for example this one so we have views slash template then we can have admin right here that uh, for template file used by the module and the administration side and also we could have a views template slash front for template files used by the modules of front office controllers and also as it's the, the example for this block insurance we have a, blue, a views slash template slash hook for template file used by the module hooks okay so if you want to override a twig template file from the back office, declare your own following uh, the same path in the in the views slash prestashop subfolders. So this is kinda not the purpose of this uh, series, but it's good to know. Anyway, let's talk a bit about uh, the front controllers or make action and page the controllers folder, which is is not existing but it could take place somewhere right here we can just define controllers right there yep so the folder contain the controller file files actually much more much more than one and you can use uh, the subfolder paths as the views file so for instance we can do as follow views template then uh, the controllers and we can just place uh, front or back inside this controller so we'll be having two folders actually front for front controllers and back as you may guess it for back controllers one of the newest feature on PrestaShop 1.7's module is the widgets which is an advanced concept introduced with this latest version so it extends the hooks feature the limitation of hooks in their basic user display hook will uh, be shown at the specific place in the template 
if a module wants uh, to display the same additional content in several places in the template, whatever the merchant shows, it still has to register and implement all the possible hooks as we did right here. So with widget, this is this is like an eliminated problem. Module developer can display content everywhere in the module is asked to do so. So when a module implement a widget in its code, it allow a theme to call the module directly with widget with this actually with widget. Let me just show you the code as commented right here to not break things. So we can just do widget name anywhere uh, and the, the module name for sure. So it would be my module and this could be placed anywhere inside my template and it will work properly and the call to fall back on it a registered hook is to call it by its method hook then hook name that if does not exist okay let me just refer that again so the call to fall back on it if a registered hook is called but it is method hook hook name for example hook header does not exist so make a module widget complaint in order to be a widget complaint a module need to follow two 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 major step so implementing an interface let me just get back to for example the ps banner since it's a good starting point would you see that it does implement a widget interface all right so let me just say that before calling a module for widget the call must be sure your module has this feature available. This can be done by implementing this interface. Okay, so from PrestaShop, PrestaShop core modules and then widget interface. All right, so let's turn our module into a widget friendly, then require this and do implement here this widget. Let me just jump into this interface and see what's going on inside it. So an interface is just simply declarations of function, of methods, all right? So this web widget interface contains two methods. The number one is render widget, the second is get widget variable, all right? So this means we need to, um, which is the word, we need to implement these two methods. So if I do alt enter in my ID, it will say that we need to add these methods. And just scroll all the way down, we have these methods implemented. Okay, so declare these, the, these mandatory methods and we need to talk about uh, each one of them with details. The method render widget is an entry point for the core in order to get the generated view. Fetch smarty template. The method get widget variable return the variable you want to assign to the smarty. Okay, I think that makes sense. This is the entry to the smarty file, to the template file, and this is the way to pass uh, variables to uh, this uh, to this method, to this hook. Okay, so the parameter sent to both function are the same. As you may see, have the headers. We have hook name, we have array of configuration, same for get variable, we have hook name and we have a configuration which is a type of array. So hook name is providing the hook name allow a module or allow uh, the module to have a different behavior according to it. So when it's null, when the module, module is called directly from a widget system, as we said this way, all right? And if it has a name of the hook when a non-implementing hook is called, for example, if I call hook left colon and or right colon, and I suppose that I didn't register this uh, right hook, right column, sorry. So let me just give you an example, but you cannot get lost right here. So let's imagine I don't have left colon and I would like to call the left colon here, then render widget will handle this since left column or left column uh, hook is not registered. Hopefully you do not get lost. Let me just refer that. So the hook name providing the hook or the hook name, I mean this parameter, providing the hook name allows the module to have different behavior according. So when it's null, then uh, the module is called directly from a widget system, which is this instruction. If it has a name of the hook or 
of a hook when a non-implemented hook is called. So the next parameter is configuration. This is an equivalent of parameters params. If you do remember in the old school PrestaShop 1.6, we have such things at params when a hook is called. So it contains a list of parameters from the whole scope of PrestaShop context, if we correct to say it. Uh, so configuration is almost the same as params. It contains a list of parameters. Once a module has implemented the method render widget as here as our module, so what will happen, there are two ways to call it. So the old way with the hooks. The first one is by triggering a hook manually registered to the module but not implemented by it. From a PHP class we can just do, for example let's imagine inside another class or inside another file or whatever, we can just do hook that exact and hook we are exact. Let me just access this hook that is implement hook call and it's also inside uh, the classes folder. So what this actually do, it execute the hook name if I just my module and unfortunately I cannot get autocomplete then this will execute the hook or execute, um, yeah, it will execute the render widget and take it away out that you, you cannot, you don't get confused. So when I do this inside a PHP file, then I'll be executing this file, uh, this method, sorry. Okay, and from a smarty way or uh, with a smarty template, we can just came into any template file, for example, this banner, let's impose that, and we can just do this and just type my module and this way I'll be calling the render widget from this module. Okay, so the method called with different regarding module the content. Again, the method called with different regarding the module content. So with widget, the function render widget, this one, of a specific module can be called directly from a smarty template in a generic call and a call with a hook name. Okay, so this is like an advanced version. This is the bare minimum things, but here is uh, two of them. Okay, so this is a general, my module, for example, here, my module. And for the call hook with a name, then I'll be doing my module right here, my module. And the hook name, for example, I'll be doing left column. Great column okay cool so also from a php class we can also call uh the hook with let me just get back into a php file and right here let's suppose we can do hook call widget uh render or call render widget and we say the module name which will be in this case uh, wait a second, my module, my module, and if we can just remove this, and the hook name, for example, it will be header, for example, and we pass the default param, and sure, if you use this, then the method where we call this must uh, contain a header or parameter params. And there you go. So this is kind of advanced things, but it's good to know it anyway. So the hook name sent to the render widget will depend on the value provided uh, to the optional hook parameters. Okay, let me just refer my things and uh, do like uh, um, a review of what we saw. And uh, here is an image that could be useful in our case. So this is what happened actually in images. So when we trigger display left column, so that this will happen, we will go to hook if it exists inside the module, if yes, then module X, for example, my module in our case, then we really we will be executing the hook display left column with its parameter, etc. Elsewhere, if it's a no, then we'll be doing module implement widget. If yes, then we'll be going to render the widget methods, and if no, does nothing. Hopefully, this uh, this image will explain a bit more than all the talk I did uh, previously. So, so that was widget in PrestaShop uh, 1.7. Okay, referring to this image, I would like to go this way when there is no registered hook, call it. 
all right so i would like to go back to my ide and inside uh, the render widget uh, make sure that i'm having some content to be displayed then the mission will be done through the administration panel exactly through uh, design then position then i will go to transplant a module and from there i will do the same so like you do me then from here i will have tada a list of all the possible hooks and just note that um, I can display it photo, I can hook to the photo the time that I don't have anything relating to photo inside my, uh, my, my, my module class, yes, yes, module class, there is no photo here, but I can do it, uh, and thankfully to um, the widget uh, interface or to the widget API. So if I hit save, then everything should be fine and if i go back to the front page and i scroll all the way down refresh and i will have hello from a widget just uh, an advice here in case uh, you see no changes you have to go to um to advanced parameters all the way down of the menu then performance then disable uh or let's, let's say change never com recompile template to force compilation and this way you will see your changes because cache is a bit silly uh, when it came to um, prestashop so let's put the widget in action and here is my template and i would like to call um a widget through uh, the smarty file as we explained as i explained in the previous video so to do that a uh, pretty simple we need to move to, uh, to inside the theme folder and just navigate under the template folder then inside it look for layouts and you have to find which layout your website is working on or is active on to do that is quite simple you just hit ctrl u command y whatever just to see the source code and search for layout word it will be a class somewhere and all defined somewhere inside whether the javascript uh, script or inside uh, the body class so you see that we have layout full with also it will be normally a class inside the body of the page and there you go so body class da, 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 and we have layout full with simply as that move back to the ide look for this layout with this one and just uh, the the place where you want to display the content and uh, just do that okay so this could be enough this would be enough to call that my module using the widget so just one thing to do to update this because uh, the render widget actually return nothing so I will do return hello Udemy from a widget okay and that should be enough okay let me just refresh the page and there you go so in your case you may not see this it's basically a problem with a cache and let me just show you how to disable it especially when you do development you need to have that cache disabled that you can see your changes in real time okay because by default cache is disabled or enabled actually and the auto compiling of the template is set to never recompile template files so you have to go to advanced parameters all the way down of the menu then performance as the previous 1.6 and just set template compilation to force compilation and it will Recompile everything ev with every new changes. So that was the call to widget through um, through a template. Presto Shop 1.7 uh, widgets are really powerful and good uh, and modern and classy. But uh, let's not forget that we already have a hooking system that is coming from the legacy 1.6, and it's an LTS at the end. So let's. Uh, let's talk about hooks at this uh, in this episode so hook the old one I mean are a way to associate your code to uh, some specific PrestaShop event most of the line they are used to insert content in a page all right so the place it will be added header footer left right column etc it will depend on the hook you choose 
hook also can be used to perform specific action under certain circumstances for example sending an email to uh, the client on order creation so let's start by the naming schema hook names are prefixed by uh, with an action or display so we do uh, act display header footer or action product card product button etc so the prefix indicate if a hook is triggered by an event or it's used to display content action mean an event display mean um, mean uh, showing content or displaying content very easy so how to use a hook first of all we need to register a hook and uh, this is actually what we did inside our module of the installation um, process or installation functions we said uh, this register hook and this is enough to register and associate um, a specific hook for this module okay at this level I'm talking uh, without regarding to the existence of widget so uh, that will make this course really applicable even for 1.6 development 1.6 prestige by me so to do a register hook as I said simply do all this register hook and mention the name of the hook uh, or whether display a header or display footer or display red colon etc all right so if you don't know where you can register here is a list of possible from uh, from the official website of PrestaShop that's showing a list of all possible hooks uh, where 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 list of hooks so there you go we have this action admin control name actions and we have a list of actions let me just click full list so we have action and we have um, display display something okay so there you go we have display admin customer admin uh, uh, display admin and uh, content admin form etc display footer somewhere it should be so just me search for it there you go so display new block the footer etc and uh, i will let you uh, i left this link to this website and the in the description or how to be popping up somewhere inside the, on the video all right so for the execution for each registered hook you must create a non-static public method for example in my case i created the header hook that uh, it is a public non-static function or method to be correct so starting with uh, the hook keyword as it's the case here and uh, followed by the name of the hook you want to use in my case it is header so this is the prefix hook is the prefix and header is the name of the hook that I would like to uh, to target actually so this method this method sorry receive one and only one parameter which is param which is actually an array of contextual information sent to the hook so if we do print param we will get a big big jump junky uh, complicated data it's contextual and it contains a lot of information about uh, our application so we have a lot of protected that we cannot access we have a, a date added id currency standalone secure card um, i think there is user 2 somewhere nope um, my fault we have ID delivery address, Xlink resources, ID shop type. Yeah, just a lot of contextual information. And to trigger a hook, so just before that, you have to remember in order to, for a module to respond to a hook call, it must be registered within PrestaShop. All right. So triggering a hook in a controller, it's easy to call a hook from a, within a controller. You simply have to use the same or to use the name with the hook exact method so let's suppose we need to call this hook uh, header hook inside um, another uh, ps banner for example we need simply to do hook dot dot or to call a static and exact and just say the hook name from the module name or hook argument sorry so to be hook name here and we will be we will be passing 
and the arguments we need to pass. But my full story here, we need actually to call this uh, hook, for example, inside here. All right, there you go. So I'll be calling header and I won't be passing anything. And th this is the way to call it from a controller. All right. Uh, the next thing we can call a hook from a theme and this is very really obvious and uh, you do remember it so this is the way there is an example to call content wrapper stop we just use the keyword hook h and equal to double quote not single quote i don't know uh, whether it's a bug or not but uh, when i call with a single quote this generally don't work well all right i do prefer generally to use double quote when calling uh, a hook uh, from a smarty file so call of a hook for a specific module also can be done using uh, the following syntax just doing hook equal h display left colon and the module uh, block card and this will only show the block card if it is hooked to the left column but this instruction or this call will show all the possible content all the possible modules that are hooked to this hook all right so in the in this one we are like filtering all the content of this hook and displaying simply this module i hope you get that okay so going further, creating our own hoax. It's pretty simple. So let's move back. Uh, let's just revert things here that I think won't be broken. Okay. So inside my install method, I will do new hook. So let me just put this install create new hook which is one I will do dollar hook I'll just simply uh, copy paste this code to avoid this and there you go so as simple as that return oops I just misspelled something this one should be like this all right there you go so it's new hook we're calling the class new hook that is by itself it's extend from hook call that also extended the object model so we are talking about active record right here and let me just get back so the next thing is to set some attribute of this hook we're setting the name the title the description and finally call the added action that will register and insert this into uh, table hooks of prestashop and return it will return success uh, on success when things are going well and this is uh, in simple how to uh, create a new hook okay but PrestaShop enable you to do it the easy way so this is like um, yeah it's uh, verbose and a lot of lines but simply through the installation we can simply 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 do this let's get rid of all this and right here as I said if you remember when we talked about installation that we can add a new hook so I will call dollar this and then it just added uh, exclamation point so register hook and the name of the hook and that's it uh, that was a uh, about uh, almost of it about the classic hooks and uh, yep so see you in the next one